In today's Bedrock Guide episode, I'm going to guide you on taking something as boring and as bland as a tunnel like this, and as bland and plain as this tunnel here, and turn one of them into this, and also like this. So if like me, you're either main basing inside of a cave or you're doing things above ground and you just want more access down to the caves because we, we actually have really cool looking caves now. There's a reason to go down there. One thing you're probably doing a lot is traveling between areas of different caves or from above ground down to the caves. This would be a great opportunity to take advantage of doing something a little bit different. Whereas maybe right now you're using something like I have over here, a ladder just to simply go between the top and the bottom, or you have a cool farm or area underground that you just recently made and traveling down something like this just seems quite boring. And it, it, it feels like it's a lot longer than it actually is. Instead, we can take areas like this and make them look and feel a lot more interesting and give us something to look at and a reason to actually travel around the world the old fashioned way by foot. Because I know a lot of you, especially by the time you watch this video, you probably already have Elytra in your world. You fly around to do everything, but sometimes that's not so easy to do when you're down in the caves. So you might have to create a way to do that, or you may just want to travel in a little bit more style. Give yourself something to see, something to feel proud of, to build lore into your world, and just overall make your world feel and look more complete. And there's going to be two primary styles of tunnel that we're going to work on. And there's a tons and tons and tons of different ways to do tunnels. But when I think of tunnels, I really think of two primary like themes to them, right? Either one is the like kind of natural feeling carved into the earth. And it looks like it's had little work done to it. Maybe a little bit of pathing here and there, right? But overall, like it, you know, it's a little crumbly and and mossy and it's got some vines hanging around and it just kind of has that overgrown feel to it. And this cave area here where it leads out to the fish farms, I think is going to be that, right? Because we, we had to carve a pretty long tunnel and it's kind of steep too, that goes up and around. So we're gonna be working on this area to get that more like kind of dingy, overgrown, naturally looking cave or tunnel feel. And then the other type of tunnel that I think of is the like very structured, purposely built, like detailed looking tunnel, right? Something that's got some structure to it. It's got support beams. It has like things inset into the walls. It has structured lighting, a structured pathway to it. That's the other type of tunnel that I think of when I think of tunnel designs. And obviously there's going to be a lot of different ways that you can do this. But an area such as this that leads straight to my skeleton farm down here seems like the perfect area to put one of these. So in today's episode, we'll be doing both of these. So we're actually going to start with the more natural looking tunnel that goes up here to the fish farm. And the first thing that you're going to really need to do is actually get yourself enough space to work, right? And this is going to vary a little bit depending on what you want to do. Maybe you want a tunnel that's kind of tight, compact, and feels a little cramped. Or maybe you want one that's really large and feels like it's got a pretty big open space. And for me, I'm thinking I'm going to go more with the ladder there. I want something that's a little bit larger because it's going to actually end up being more efficient for me to use and travel because eventually we're going to have an Elytra to fly around, right? And this might still be the quickest and easiest way to get here. Um, although I could probably shoot up surface side and get here too. But it feels like doing something like making this tunnel larger around. That way I could fly through it with an elytra if I need to. It, it's still going to be kind of tight. And I'll probably smash walls a few times. But I want to be able to fly through here with the elytra. And I want to have room to be able to add, especially like above, like a lot of room to add in detail blocks like slabs, stairs, hang vines, glow berries, and maybe other bits and pieces like wall bits coming down, dripstone spikes or something like that. I'm not really sure, but I want some room to work. That's what I know. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to probably going to load up a stream and me and stream, we're going to dig this thing out and make it a lot larger. And we'll probably do that with the other tunnel as well. The one that leads to the skeleton farm. That way we have room to work with over there too. So hopefully anybody watching this video right now, you're able to watch the stream. We were able to hang out and get some grindy work done. Let's go. So we're inside a stream right now, and I thought I was just going to meet you guys on the other side. But as I was digging this out, it kind of made me think a little bit. Wow, this thing's looking very 
very straight when you're one of the things when you're digging out the cave that you're going to want to do is you're going to actually like dig shape into the cave as you go otherwise you're going to end up doing a lot more work later on just to shape the thing right so try not to make i keep saying cave i mean tunnel um stream's been yelling at me this for this like the whole stream because i keep saying the word cave when you're digging your tunnel you want to dig in shape to the tunnel don't leave big flat areas like prowl has done prowl has been very bad here right start to dig in kind of random almost like holes into the side of the cave have varying heights for the ceiling have varying patterns for the floor like try when you can when you're first digging this thing out to not have everything be a hundred percent perfectly straight now no specific tips for the structured tunnel except usually all you need is a big like dig out in a big square around and in a straight path or sometimes maybe even a diagonal if that's what you need to do that'll lead you to the location where you need to go in my case here i made it seven wide by seven tall is it seven tall or six tall one two three four five six tall um because i think that's how much space i'm going to want to work with you want to give yourself plenty of space doing something is three by three or even five by five may not be enough right because you want to build depth into the tunnel so you want to be able to have pillars and then behind it you want to be able to have some type of block behind there that's going to uh, have depth to it like i used with the walls and the skeleton farm and you might want to set lights into it and a lot of different things so just give yourself self plenty of room to build in i guess you could even if you wanted to save yourself a little bit of time you could have you know just maybe dug it out to right here did a design with just this area seeing how you like it seeing how much space you need and then dug the rest of it out but I didn't mind digging it all out because I have a general idea of the size that I want already and I'll be able to take that all the way down. Okay, so here we are. And the thing that you're going to want to start with when doing this is really trying to even out a lot of the textures that we have here now. What we want to do is we want to get rid of some of the like really obscure, like out of place holes like like this that I tried to do and get rid of a lot of the like patches of texture that might not fit or make sense for what we want to do. So for now, what that's going to mean for me is taking out any dirt, any granite and any diorite that I see and replacing it with just regular stone. For now, I'll probably leave the patches of andesite. I'll leave the patches of cobblestone that I put down to fill in holes where I was mining and stuff like that. And we'll see if we can incorporate those into the actual detailing of the area, or if we're gonna end up changing some of that over too. But for now, there's no reason to just wholesale remove that. We just wanna get rid of the colors in here that don't really match what it is that we're trying to accomplish and look like. Okay, so I'm gonna finish some of the rest of like filling in blocks down there a little bit, but I wanted to start with some of the detailing here with you guys. So what we wanna do now that we've, we kinda of got a general shape, we kinda of have general texture going through here, is we wanna go ahead now and add in some extra detail to some of our shape to the room right so basically just looking for any kind of flat parts and unflattening them so coming up here and just digging in some like little like ridges into the ceiling here and then doing the same thing into the wall it's going to give our uh, tunnel a little bit of interest uh, give you something to look at and make it look like it's less just been carved out and it more like generated in this way right so what we can do is we can do this in all sorts of different areas around and also tighten up some areas like this where it seems maybe a little bit too jumbled uh, we can go up there and fill in those spots as well and that's going to give us something like this to work with we have a lot more interesting shape to do things with now but we haven't really shaped it enough yet i'm gonna let me switch some of this out okay so now that we have a little bit of character with the shape of our cave it's not quite as boring now we want to further make it interesting by adding in some texture and basically when you hear a minecrafter talk about texture what they mean is break this up break up this texture that you see on the wall of all stone because while we are going to keep it as our primary block we don't want it all to be stone all the way through because that would that would look rather boring right so what we can do is grab some blocks that will complement and go with stone we have tough we have cobblestone we have andesite i have uh cracked stone bricks i have mossy stone bricks i have mossy cobblestone and i have gravel all of these that are kind of in that gray family will work good and having the mossy bits here will also help us bring a little bit of color to the cave so it's not too monotone right so where do you start what do you do 
Well, really, it's not that bad, right? Let's just go ahead and like just replace a little patch of blocks here. And let's put in some cobblestone here. Just like that, right? Now we have a nice little patch there. Let's go up in here and let's put in some andesite. You don't have to necessarily stick to any type of pattern or anything like that. You can just kind of randomly pick small areas, make up some random different shapes and add stuff in. And you can even mix and match some too. Like we could put in those stone bricks. We could put in some andesite beside it. And I think that looks pretty good. You can also follow certain rules that you make for yourself with this too, right? Like maybe you only want tough to kind of sit lower on the ground like this, because it feels like maybe it'll it'll fit in more if it's down on the ground as opposed to being blotchy up on the ceiling because of its like slightly different color that it has and tone that it has. So that's fine too. do that. I usually will do that with gravel as well. I don't usually like to put too much of it like up in the walls or the ceiling or anything like that. I'd rather it just be more down on the ground because it's such loose material. It feels like it would be further down on the ground. So I'm going to take this process. I'm going to apply it all the way down here in a little bit, but I'm going to probably do that during a live stream and I'm about to do in about an hour and a half. So instead with you guys right now, I'm going to take you to the next step of detailing um, after I plug in a few more things in this area in terms of what you can do to further the look of your tunnel. And that next thing is making slab and stair variants of a lot of your blocks. So go ahead and let's take cobblestone, for example, and we'll take some cobblestone variants like the um, slabs and stairs here. And we'll just kind of mix it in to kind of smooth out some of these more rough areas that we have. And what it'll do is kind of give you a little bit more gradual of a look when you do some things and it'll just bring a little bit further interest to like how you're applying things. And sometimes you'll like I put that there. I don't I don't quite like it. I'm going to take that out. And you're going to want to do a lot of this with your primary block too, right? So we have, again, our primary block being the stone. What we might do is smooth out a lot of these ridges in the ceiling. Not all of them. You don't have to do all of them, but just like put some in here and there just to make things look a little bit more interesting, especially any like rough corners, um, just to break them up some. So now that you have a little bit of color and a little bit of shape in your caves or in your I'm going to keep saying caves and your tunnel. Now it's time to have a better way to go up and down, right? Because one of the purposes of doing a tunnel is you don't want to have to jump so much, right? We're kind of like we're at this point where we have to jump a lot. So what we want to do is add in stairs and slabs to eliminate a lot of the jumping that's needed and instead be able to more smoothly flow up. You can do it a couple different ways, right? You may decide to use like stone and cobblestone and that sort of thing and kind of make the cave floor feel kind of natural feeling as well. Or you may decide to have the floor a little bit more structured, kind of purposeful in a way that maybe the civilization that you're creating that lore for in your world, they, they did carve out this cave, right? Maybe kind of rough, but they carved it out and they needed to make a way to get up better. So one of the ways they did that was they actually put in some type of staring and flooring to get up. And I think that's the route that we're gonna take here today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use uh, jungle wood because that's going to be a common flooring and things that I use within the rest of my base. And I'm going to use that to kind of like stair step us up in locations, right? So I think first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use it in areas to stair step me up just to kind of get that general pathing down. And then after what I'll do is I'll pull out some of these stone blocks in, in the way and we'll go ahead and replace some of those too. But maybe at the same time, we'll leave some of them. We're not going to have it a solid path going all the way down, but instead it's going to be a kind of broken up path. It's going to have patches of it that uh, maybe have worn away over time or didn't get filled in for various reasons. Um, and I think that will give us a lot more of a kind of interesting roughed in look rather than a really smoothed out look like maybe we would use in other places. So I think we have a nice pattern and flow here. If you kind of take a look as I walk up, we can easily walk up. We don't have to do any jumping. We have a lot of breaks in the jungle wood here, which kind of gives a, a lot more of that kind of broken up, worn down feel that we're going for for this specific tunnel. I really like how the flow works. I really like the spottiness of it. And again, it's adding a little bit of a pop in color. And what is otherwise a very gray cave. So I do like what that's doing to the place as well. But speaking of pops of color, we're not quite done with color yet because we're going to need ways to provide a little bit of light in the cave. Although this cave, I do, I keep saying cave. 
it's a tunnel this tunnel i do want it to be pretty dark and dingy feeling but at the same time i don't i don't want it to be completely pitch black so we have some things that we can use to help us out with this okay so now that we are done with this portion i've actually started stream i didn't have time to do this before stream so we're going to do it with everybody here live is we need to add a little bit of lighting and the look that i'm going for with this cave or this tunnel rather is i want it to be kind of dark kind of eerie i don't want it to be super well lit we may have the occasional torch or maybe the occasional lantern around but for the most part our lighting's going to be with glow light and and with glow berries um, it may end up putting us in a position where we have some spawnable spots in here and i think that's fine because there's so many other cave spots around here i really shouldn't see like too many mobs spawn in here right so i think what we're going to do is i probably shouldn't it'll be hard for you guys to see if i start knocking these out now but what i'm going to do is i'm going to place some glow lichen down and i might bone meal it a couple times right just to make it spread and I need, I really, I need some extra. So I might like bone meal it a few times, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep taking it and placing it in different various areas. And we can use a decent amount of it, I think, uh, just to kind of spread it around like this, right? And it's going to give us a really cool look. Now to pick it up, you can't use silk touch. You have to use shears. I don't know why silk touch doesn't work, but it doesn't. And we're just going to keep plastering this in all sorts of different areas around the cave. I wish it would, would spread to the right, spread to the right. I don't think that's supposed to happen. We'll take that up. We'll put it where we want to put it. And we're going to use this as one of our methods to get all of our lighting everywhere we want it. And the other bit we're going to use is glow berries. So glow berries, we could go ahead. We could place in some various areas around here. One thing I think I'm going to try to do for the most part, I don't want a lot to dangle in the middle because remember, at some point we're going to be flying through here. And if you fly through a vine, you're going to get stopped by it. So I think for the most part, it'll kind of hang out a little bit more towards the edges or at the very least, give me a very clear path to fly through. Also, cool tip for the glow berries, by the way, as the vines grow down. Uh, well, first of all, you can add to the vines by just clicking. But if you use a silk touch tool on the vine, it'll give you a glow berry back every single time. So just something that you can do to... Uh, I guess make sure that you get your return back on the glow berries and then you can bone meal individual pieces like that to make actual glow berries pop in. And one of the last steps, if not probably the last step that we'll take is just to try to fill in a little bit more space, break up these walls a little bit more and add a little bit more color. We're going to take some leaves and put them in. You can get leaves from trees just by um, using like a set of shears or a silk touch tool. We'll get you the leaves off of them. And the same thing with vines, if you use shears or silk touch tool, you can get vines as well, which you can usually find on like oak trees and dark oak trees and that sort of thing. And we're going to use that just to add in like a little bit more green to the place. I don't want to overdo it. So we'll kind of go through and just like place this in some different areas around just to try to see what it's going to do. And if we feel like we need to add more or take some out, we'll do that. And also know with the vines, they're going to grow. So like this, I don't need to add another one. It'll grow down. It might even grow out some too to fill in. That way I don't have to actually use as much of it. And then in some instances too, we might like put it in places where it'll like grow downwards and uh, just give us like a little bit of like hanging, uh, like greenery too. It doesn't always necessarily have to be plastered onto the walls. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to add this in. We'll be done with this cave or this, uh, what is this thing called? This tunnel. Uh, I'll take whatever we do here and apply it the rest of the way down. And then we'll move on to our structured tunnel that's going to be next. Okay, and I have another thing that Stream actually brought up to me, and this is a good one to do as well, is add in a little bit of water, right? So what we can do is like find that perfect spot where we have like a little bit of a flat area. What about like right here, right? And then I guess I'll have to probably get rid of this. Um, and then, or maybe I'll have to put something like over a little bit here just so you guys can see what i'm doing let me put a torch down temporarily and what we can do is we can maybe like put a hole in the wall right here and how about we even put like a little like i don't know cobblestone stair or something right there and we'll dig us in a little bit deeper we have flowing water coming out and filling in a little little hole and we'll actually like turn this into water sources i'll get some water to put in there we do just a couple of those around in a couple of spots i don't want it to be too much like maybe another one will go like down there somewhere 
and it, it'll again just be like a little bit of color and i think it'll just it'll serve like a little bit extra purpose to really make the place look cool maybe we can have part of it like kind of flow down several levels before it hits a stopping point okay now unfortunately stream has forced me to use a controller here so i'm sorry for any jagged movements but um, i wanted to check it out in rtx mode to see how dark it was looking it's not really looking very dark and that's because i never really realized how bright this glow lichen is so i think what we'll do is we're gonna like get especially like this part like we're just gonna get rid of a lot of it i think i think it's better just have like little bits and pieces of it here and there just giving us a little bit of illumination without like overdoing it so i think because I, I do want it to again feel kind of dark especially these like these ones right here like they're lighting off a lot of light and i think that's going to give us a little bit more of the vibe we're going for okay so when it comes to your structured tunnel it's good to have a plan and a plan we have because i actually spent some time designing this in a creative world first with a stream so we, we kind of like have things already figured out here i want to walk you through a little bit of the process but really i would suggest the main part of your process should just be to hop into a creative world it can just be a regular creative like flat world and then just start to carve yourself something out, right? Just start to make a little bit of the structure, play around with some of the blocks you want, etc. because you're gonna find you're gonna save yourself a, a lot of time because this, this can be a little overwhelming, right? It's a lot of space to fill. There's a lot of options for blocks. And instead of having to get everything together in survival mode and then put it up and take it down and put it up and take it down and okay, let me go get this block and let me travel back and forth to my storage a thousand times. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier if you just plan it out in creative mode first. But I'm gonna go over some of the important aspects that we kind of like put together as I go through and start building this first segment for you. And you may already notice, we cleared out a decent amount of space here. I think we were like seven wide here, and I think it's like six high here. And, and my creation that I made in a creative world is a little bit even bigger than this, but that's fine. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and expand as we go. And one important thing that you're gonna to want to have is going to be some pillars because pillars just they just break everything up they give you space and they kind of divide up the the hallway the tunnel in this case a lot better and make it look i don't know a little bit more segmented you you get a little bit less of the feel of the repetitiveness if you have pillars right and in my case i like to use like blocks that are a little bit fancier feeling and looking they look a little bit i don't know more high class or I don't know the right term you want to use insert term that makes it feel more like expensive here right and I like to use these guys I like to use the uh, smooth andesite um, you can use a lot of the smooth blocks will really be good for this right and I want to get myself a decent amount of height because one of the things I'm going to be doing is doing kind of an archway up top we're going to go up six here and we're actually going to end up going down one on some little strips that are going to be dividing uh, this area up and i'm even going to go ahead i'm going to knock this out i'm going to place a block right here too and i'm going to do this on both sides okay and we're going to dig ourselves a little bit of room up here because we need to make our arch i'm going to put a seventh block up top here i'm going to put a backwards stair get my slabs out as well because we're going to use those i'm going to put a backwards stair just like this just like this and then we will put a slab a slab and a slab just like that and that's going to be our little archway and we will repeat this every so often right and for longer tunnels you may want this distance to be further apart for shorter tunnels you may need the distance to be a little bit closer together i recommend five at the very shortest if you have a shorter tunnel and in my case it's the tunnel's kind of long so it's going to be every nine right so i've kind of already carved and planned that out and we're actually going to be doing a step up here so i'm going to kind of count this one at that area and then we'll have to find some interesting way to step this up and make it look right i think we'll be i think we'll figure it out i think we'll be okay and the next thing we're going to do is our walls and what you don't want to do is you don't want your walls to be flat right you don't want to put them at this level because then you have no depth in your build and depth is going to be something that adds a lot of interest to your tunnel it's going to make you feel good when you walk down it because you're going to have multiple layers of things going on so what we're going to do is we're actually going to dig one block into the walls here just like so and then we're going to create our depth this way by putting our block of choice here. In my case, I'm gonna go with deep slate tiles. I like the look of the block. It kind of fits the theme of the rest of the base. So it's gonna fit good in that respect as well. And for you, you're gonna to have to decide what's gonna work best for you. You may use a type of wood, you may use a type of stone. 
um, just kind of go with whatever's going to fit with your base theme or can be somewhat related to it in some way. So for us, here we go. Deep Slate Tiles. Okay. So next thing we want to do is we want more depth. We don't just want to stop here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to dig in these little slits right here, just like this. Right. So now we got a little bit of depth that we can create. I'm actually going to I'm going to knock them back a little bit further too in here because we're going to have ways to create even further depth within this wall because we don't want the wall to be one flat texture. It's not going to be very interesting that way. I'm going to go over here, actually, and I'm going to take this diorite that I have and I'm going to make it into diorite walls. We'll make a few because I'm going to need some to go down the whole tunnel, right? What we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of color contrast in here. This is going to add another point of interest into our wall where as we're walking down and we're taking a look, we, we, we our eyes get like drawn into the uh, little wall blocks that are right in here, right? And then we need lighting. And I like to incorporate lighting into the builds, right? I don't just like to light it or hide it. Yes, yeah, so on Bedrock Edition, you can put some slabs down here. You can hide the lighting and have it lit up and look really good. But I love incorporating lighting into my builds. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to put some shroom lights here. We're going to put some orange stained glass over top of that for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it complements the light of the shroom light. Number two, we're going to be using acacia in our build as well. We've used it in other areas of the base too. So by bringing in some more orange, it's going to highlight and match with that acacia wood that we have used and will use in other places. So again, it's part of our theme. Okay, so now we have those details in on the wall. I want to move to the floors now. So with the floors, we're going to create depth here too, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take some slabs, smooth stone slabs, and I'm going to connect up here to here. Smooth stone works really good here because it's it's kind of that like neutrally gray color. It goes well with the kind of gray and black palette we have across the whole base. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of border the floor that I'm making a little bit. Bordering things can also give you a level of detail that you may not get otherwise. And then I'm going to take a polished deep slate stair block here and we're going to run it this way. This is going to kind of give us a transition down to this depth in the floor that we're using. and also gives us another texture of the same color palette block that we're using. So that's also good. We're breaking, breaking, we're not breaking. We're breaking up the textures. And then next, I'm going to take out this flooring right here. And we're going to go back and we're going to add in a little bit more contrast yet again. And that contrast is going to be with polished diorite slabs. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring these down just like so. Polished diorite slabs. I love them. I think they're really great looking blocks and we're going to incorporate them here. You know what I probably need to do? I didn't really plan this out in the build. We need to have like a good transition strip of some sort right here. And I don't know what that is. Let me figure that out. OK, yeah, I think that'll do the trick on these ones. We'll use a solid block just to kind of break up the uh, pattern a little bit. It'll feel like it'll fit better with the uh, arches here. And also it'll allow us to do a step up here and kind of have everything blend and work good. So we're going to do that. And then the next thing that we're going to do is the ceiling here. So I got some really great tips for that, too. OK, now for the ceiling, you can see what I have in my hand here. I actually have some copper slabs and eventually I'm going to want to use the green version of these, the the oxidized ones. But we have to wait for that to happen. So instead of like making an area to set them out and wait for them to oxidize, and we'll probably go over copper maybe more in detail a little bit later in the series. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to put them up in their regular form here and then we'll we'll let them oxidize kind of over time later, right? So what I'm going to do here is I want to kind of like assist or go along with this archway, but I don't want to completely cover it. So we're actually going to start a block back here just like this, right? And we're going to bring this across. OK, nope, not like that, because this one's sitting a little bit lower. We're going to have to figure out how we're going to do that transition up because I'm I'm honestly not sure yet at all. I'm going to bring it across just like this. And then what we're going to do is let me put a solid block right here. We're going to go up like this. We're going to come up like this. And then we're going to do the same thing we did over there, over here. And we're going to just bring these all the way down just like this and connect them over to this side. And like I said, I'll see if we need to adjust it in some way once we actually get this in because we did that like rise up. I'm not quite sure how that's going to connect over yet. And then what I'm going to do instead of just putting like slabs across here, I wanted I wanted it to look a little interesting. So we're going to take these stairs and we're going to face them just like this. What's going to do is going to give us a kind of interesting looking ridge. 
across that's again giving us a different type of depth that's kind of like one of the things we're really working on doing here is creating depth in our build and adding like these kind of upside down stairs to give us ridges is a really cool and interesting way to do that it's going to make people look and think oh well what kind of block what kind of block is that how did he how did he get those little single wide like ridges going down through there and you have to kind of go up here and you got to take a look and see that oh well they're upside down stairs faced in this fashion right so it gives, makes the person that's looking at it or going through here kind of think about it a little bit and wonder exactly what it is that you did and honestly i really think for here all i'm gonna do because it's not gonna look good it's it's almost not gonna look like perfect no matter what i do i think we just live with that we come back here and we just fill this gap with a another uh, copper block like this. And I think that'll be that'll be fine for here. But we're not done here because we, we don't have a lot of sources of lighting. And especially when we look at this and use RTX later, I want it to really look good. And you need a decent amount of lighting for things to look good in RTX mode, right? So what I want to do is I want to bring in a little bit more, actually kind of a lot of bit more. We're going to go right here to the center. We're going to go up. We're going to give ourselves another light up here but I don't want to throw an orangey color light this time. We're going to, we're going to put a sea lantern down. I did go and get sea lanterns off camera because I'm not ready to show off rating a guardian temple yet, a guardian monument, a monument. Yeah. I'm not ready to show that off yet. I'll show that off to you guys in the near future though. I promise. Um, and then we're going to put an acacia trap door here. It kind of blends in a lot for now, but think when these turn all green for me and oxidize, it's going to stand out and it's going to look really good. Also torches, torches aren't going to cut it. Torches are not going to cut it at all. What we're going to do, we're going to knock these out. We don't want torches. They're gone. What we want to do is we're going to come down like right below here. We're going to put a fence. We're going to put a trap door on top of that fence. We're going to put a chain. We're going to put a lantern. And look at that. It looks like a really cool little like lantern holder. It's a nice little detail for us to add in. It just adds a little bit of extra interest in our lighting. Remember, people, if you didn't see it, go back to my lighting episode. You can use lighting a lot to help detail a build and make it look good. And that's one of the things that we're doing here for sure. Let me do that on this side too. Okay, now that we have those in, what I wanna do is I wanna bring in a little bit more color into here and uh, just break up this wall just a little bit more. So you see I have warped trap doors on me. We're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna place them down right here. And remember, they'll match our, our ceiling whenever that finally oxidizes and turns fully that uh, turquoise -y whatever color that it turns. And it's going to look really good. But now we have a little bit of texture on the wall. We have depth in the wall. This is depth in. This is depth out. Uh, we have depth built into here because we can see through to these lights. It's all looking really good. I do have one more secret weapon up my sleeve, and it's going to involve teaching you guys about something brand new. Now, this fun, interesting thing we're going to add in here is going to be a redstone lamp and you may just think okay well brow it's just it's just a redstone lamp i mean they're kind of cool right they look okay but why is this important because we're going to be using something very special with this i'm going to go over to my crafting table here i have three quartz three glass three oak slabs and if i go over to here i can make a daylight sensor with this what is a daylight sensor well depending on which way you have it the the button on it flicked it will either give out a redstone signal when it has daylight or sees daylight or it'll give one out when there is no daylight so it could it could go either way right and in this case what we're going to do is we're going to put these at every single one of these little like intersections in the hall and we're going to hook it into the daylight sensor and then whenever we're down here and we might do this in like various areas of the base too maybe but whenever we're down here if we go through this uh this hallway this tunnel we'll know if the light's on it's daytime outside. And if the light's off, it's nighttime outside. And I think that'll be something that's pretty cool to know. So what are we gonna do? We have to connect this up. And this daylight sensor right here, it needs to be able to see Scott, the sky to know if it's daytime or not. So I'm gonna break this thing up and we're gonna put it somewhere special. That somewhere special is just gonna be hidden behind this wall right here. And how are we gonna do this? Well, you can look at my coordinates. I'm standing at negative 606. And then the Z coordinate is 132. So I'm just gonna go to those coordinates when I'm top side and I'll just dig straight down and that'll get me to that spot. And now that we got the hole all the way up to the top, just to plug it, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place a piece of glass here and I'm gonna place a moss carpet there. So now it's nice and disguised. I can't fall down it, but it still counts as sky access. It can see through things like carpet and glass. Okay, and now that we got our hole, 
that is now covered. I can go ahead, we can plop this down and we can take this redstone signal out of here and let's just go ahead and bring it over. And we just need to bring it over to this block right here. So as you can see, if I run this across just like this, it's now connected and that light being on is telling me that it's daytime outside right now. Cover that back up, cover that back up. And then uh, we're gonna need access to back here. So I'm not going to cover that because what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take a redstone line down, straight down the whole length of the hall. And every single time we run across where we're gonna put one of these, we'll just do this exact same thing where we take the redstone signal over and into the block below the redstone lamp. And that will provide power to the redstone lamp. And after going through for quite a long time, it took it took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. We've gone from just having one segment of the hallway done to all of it. And it turned out to look absolutely awesome. This is hooked up, it's working, it can see daylight. We know it's nighttime or it's daytime outside now because the lights turned on here. Should I like invert that? Maybe I need to invert that. I don't know. Um, but anyways, it's all done. Did I, I didn't really do anything special or grand with the actual little rooms connecting because we don't have time for that. We need to hurry up and get this episode finished. But first, we need to see what this looks like with RTX on. Because when I tell you it's amazing, oh, it's so amazing. And here we go. One good walk down the hallway. RTX turned on. Oh, man, this looks so good. We really, I think, hit the right amount of lighting for this room, which is a lot of it, because when you're going down a hallway or a tunnel of some sort, especially something like this is supposed to be structured and feel kind of grand. Um, I think we hit the nail on the head with the amount of light that we have here. And I think we have a good basis for going forward for the rest of our base. Anytime we need to make some sort of tunnel that we can do something like similar ish to this in some way, shape or form. Maybe not repeat it exactly like block for block, but something pretty close to this that I think is going to look good all the way through. Let's go take one last look at the um, the tunnel that leads up to the fish farm. And here we are in the tunnel that is now complete bottom to top, top to bottom. And I really like it a lot. It turned out really good. It's a little dark and creepy. So hopefully it comes through okay on YouTube. I'll, I'll try to remember to boost the uh, gamma a little bit on it, but I wanted it to be kind of dark and dingy and that sort of thing. That was kind of the intent of this tunnel. So we really did like two very different types of tunnel in the game. And I think this one's also going to serve that purpose of if I want to, if I want to like actually, I don't know, take an elytra later on when I have one and fly through here, I should be able to thread that needle pretty easily to fly through and get from bottom to top really quick. But it's also fun just kind of walk through it. So I hope everybody has enjoyed and took something away from this episode. I wanted to focus a little bit more on building because I feel like world building is a really important part of Minecraft. It's not always about building these big, huge, crazy farms. And I love building big, huge, crazy farms. I do. But it's also about once you build them, what do you do with them? Do you just leave it in a blank spot somewhere do a one by two K like tunnel to just go straight to it? Or do you connect up your world and make yourself feel like fun and like just have like joy walking through something like this when you go from point A to point B? Yeah, I like I like <clears throat> and that's the route that I'm going for. We want to not only make all the cool, amazing things, but we want to connect it all and make it all seem special as we go through the world. So hopefully you now know how. <clears throat> So hopefully you now have a few good tips to building yourself some tunnels. If you have any tips yourself, go ahead and drop them down in the comment section below or hit me up on Discord or on Twitter to let me know them. Or if you need any more tips, make sure you ask those in the comment section down below too. I thank you all for joining me today. I appreciate it. Make sure you click that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Bye.